So we had to add this check to say, hey, um, if, if, if they said new frame and they filled up that frame, then we want to actually write out that last frame. But if they didn't fill up the frame, or if they said new frame and there's nothing in there at all, then we don't want them to write, or we don't want to write out the frame. So we need to write a test to check that, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's add p partial data to a frame. For example, here's our, our data, and if we add an entry for category one for this frame, but we don't finish off doing two or three, or maybe we do do two, but we don't do three. You know, we haven't filled out this frame. If we don't fill out this frame, then we don't want the profiler to write out that last frame. We'll just go up to the last good full frame, but we don't have a unit test to verify that. So in this video, let's write a unit test to do that. Um, okay, I'm going to call this test then what are we, I'm going to collapse this right here, test profiler, and we're going to say mm, exclude incomplete frames, like so. Now, what do we need to do in here? Well, we need to write out the headers, and we need to write out some data, and then we need to write out some more data, and then we need to close and verify what we have is correct. Well, We've already done that. We've written code to write out the headers. We've written code to write out some data. Uh, the only thing that's different this time is we want to write out some more samples, but we don't want to fill out the frame completely. So should we copy and paste, or should we refactor? Hopefully the answer is obvious to you at this point. We wish to factor, and let me, I'm actually, even though this should be old hat, I think it's useful to go through just again. Uh, what does it mean to factor? If you have an equation, 3x plus 6, some simple algebra, what do the two uh, pieces of this expression have in common? Well, they have a 3, so I can factor the 3 out. I can say pop this in parentheses, pull the 3 out, pull the 3 out of this, and so that leaves us with 3x plus 2. And so we have factored out what is common between these two expressions. Well, the same is true in coding. I could copy and paste a lot of code here that we wrote in the last test and put it down here and just simply tweak the code to add a few more samples here. But I don't want to, I want to I want to centralize that logic and so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to have a <coughs> function here, void write samples. And let me go down here to the test. Now what part of this test here is doing the writing of the samples? It looks like this all the way down, so I'm going to put that here, and then in here I'm just going to say write samples, like so, and that should still compile, let's control shift B, see what happens here, oh, of course, missing, missing, where's that coming from, oh, I forgot to uppercase all this, control shift U, control shift B, uh, profile, file name, it doesn't know what that is here, because I've basically moved it all the way up here. So I'm going to make this a little more global. I'm going to control L that to cut it. <clears throat> Let's put it right here. But I want to make it private to this one compilation unit. I don't want other compilation units to uh, either intentionally or unintentionally a link to it through the linker or extern from it. If you need help understanding extern and linking, go look at the C++ playlist. I have some videos on that. So the way we can get around that is, well, I, two ways. I could say static, but then once I get a lot of things up here, I have to say static on all of them. And you may think static means static, as in compile time static, uh, but there's no class here, all right? So this is actually a compilation unit um, um, concept. It basically makes this private to the compilation unit. Um, but static, I don't, I don't want to have to say static on everything. So just as good and works identical to static is by giving your compilation unit an unnamed namespace, like so, which basically makes all of this private to the compilation unit. Okay, Pro -pro profile file name. Since this is more global, I'm actually going to costify this even more. I'm going to drop a const out here. Control Shift U U U U U U underscore U U U U underscore Control Shift U U U U and now that is about as constant as it can get. The const here means you can't modify this data, which is true. If you try to modify it, the, at runtime it'll blow up at you saying, hey, you're trying to modify a string literal that you defined when you compiled this thing. That's totally illegal. You can't do that.
It's not dynamic memory you created with new. This const means you can't change what this pointer is pointing to. It will point to this string literal always and forever. Okay, let's, uh, so now that I did this up here, I can paste that there, and I also have access to it right here. Control shift B, well I can see there's an error here. Num frames, num categories, those are declared and defined right here. So I'm going to put this as well in our unnamed namespace, make it more global to the compilation unit. You can kind of see that the compilation unit starting to look a little bit like a class. And I could have done this in a class. The gtest framework has the ability to write classes that are tests, but I think I'm going to stick with this. This is kind of a C++ specific thing, but here's some data members, here's some functions. That's why it looks a little, little bit like a class, except obviously I cannot instantiate it. Everything's static. Uh, num frames, where's that coming from? Num frames is five, so con oops, control L that, control shift L to delete the extra line. I'm gonna paste this up here. Control shift L, control shift B. Ask the compiler what's wrong. Uh, oh, categories. Yeah, if I'm gonna bring that up there, I gotta bring the categories as well. And you may think, Jamie, you're just kinda pulling all this stuff out to make it global for two functions. I have a hunch that we're going to use this a lot in this file because we have more tests to write. Control shift B. Build succeeded. Let's uh let's run this. Should still all tests should pass. That's good. Good time to commit my code. Hold on. Okay, I just did a commit offline. Ex exclude incomplete frames. So again, we we want to write all this out and then we want to write some extra and then we want to verify that all that's written are the complete frames with their categories. So now I can just say, hey, write samples. And then what do I need to do now? I need to dump some extra trashy data out there. So I'm going to say profiler dot add entry uh, categories sub zero. And I want to do a 15. And I'll just stop right there. Now, <clears throat> I'm getting the right squiggly. And I bet you can guess why. Profiler is not in scope anymore. Remember we... Uh, Declared it right here. I just moved it up here to the right samples function. So I think what I'm going to do is cut this and put it in our unnamed namespace as well. And now I can access that. But the problem now is write samples. It opens, it writes, and then it shuts down, causing all the data to be written to the file. So let's stick true to the name of this function. All I want it to do is to write the samples. I don't want it to to open the file. So I'm going to control L this, put this right here, let's get rid of our shutdown right here. So now I'm going to say, okay, profiler initialize, go write some samples. Uh, by the way, let's add another entry and then profiler dot shut down. Alright, now as I stated, we should get the same data that we got before. And so we need to write code to check that we got this data. But wait a minute. We did that in the previous video, didn't we? Didn't it? It's, it's up here. It's right here, isn't it? Copy, paste, or refactor? You should know the answer by now. I'm going to say void check samples. Uh, or I, I could say verify samples. Either one. Uh, let me grab all this. Control X. Control V. Just eliminating extra white space that I don't need. I'm going to say check samples right here. And uh, let's just comment this out for now. Since I just did a refactor here, I want to verify that this this test still works properly. And it looks like it failed. Why did it fail? Oh, <laughs> we didn't do the initialize nor the shutdown. So let's do it. Uh, copy, paste. Copy, paste. Now it may hurt you inside to see me still copying and pasting, which is true. Maybe there's a way to get around just copying and pasting these few lines. We could put this in a function and call it open and write data. And then we could call that from here. And we could probably call it from here. Anyway, uh, we don't need it yet, so we'll do that refactoring later if necessary. Uh, and also to the copy and paste thought, is I'm copying and pasting much, many, 
a lot less lines than I was before now that I have the right samples in the check samples function. So that sounds like I'm rationalizing a little bit, and I am. But uh, a little copy paste is better than a whole lot. So if I'm going to sin, I'm going to sin less than a whole lot. Okay, let's uh, build, run. It's a good thing we we check this, isn't it? We were able to run our tests and see that they still failed. Now that they pass, I feel good. Let's do a commit. Hold on while I do a commit. Okay, let's uh, let's do this test. Initialize, write samples, add an entry, shut down, and then check samples. All right. So even though we added this bogus bogus 15 check samples, uh, still looks for uh, num frames and num categories. So basically, since I've dumped this 15 into our our profile samples, the profiler will, will ignore it and simply give us what we had before. Control F5. And it failed. Assertion failed. Now this assertion is coming from the C assert macro I was using before. It's not a, a test. It's showing that the PC.name equal equal category and category not equal null. Do you know what we did wrong? Do you know what we did wrong? You probably did. You probably noticed it while I was Right in this thinking, Jamie, you forgot to uh, profiler dot new frame. Okay, remember we were here. If I want to dump a next sample 15, well, I'm well beyond that first frame, so I have to uh, call new frame to send it into the first category again. Now, this this should uh, that little scenario right there. One, you can say, Jamie, you're not worth watching because you just constantly make mistakes. But I think more importantly, you should see that. Hey, Jamie was smart. Let me get rid of this again. Jamie was smart. He dropped that assert there to check for certain situations. And immediately, I can see, oh, yeah, why would that condition? Be? Oh, that's right. I forgot to new frame it. I didn't rehearse this video before I did that. I just naturally, I'm, my mind is in context, and I know that I forgot to do a new frame. So so there you go. That, that should be a little push to adding checks and assertions. And make your code as bulletproof possible as you can. One thing I like to use with new programmers and say, hey, um, if you, I had to use your code to run the automatic pilot on an airplane you're about to ride on, or maybe we were going to, going to put it in your heart monitor uh, that's going to make your heart beat at the right speeds and stuff, would you let me do that with your code? And of course, 99% of the time the programmer I pose that question to wants to crawl away and <laughs> make their code more bulletproof, but that's what we're going for here is is a bulletproof code. All right, I'm going to bring that back in, just verify that my tests pass, and they do. Okay, well, one more cheat. I want to just add, I probably don't need to, but I want to drop a 16 out here and verify that I'm good there. So let me um, copy, paste. Oh, such, I feel like I sin. I feel like I'm swearing every time I say copy, paste. But uh, here I'm going to go control L, control VV. Let's drop frame 16 out there. Uh, and again, right here, I'm going to say check samples. And then down here, we'll check samples. Now I feel a little weird because I'm writing tests here before I wrote the I wrote the code before I wrote the tests. Oh, interesting. I wrote the code before I wrote the test, and I'm expecting the test to pass, but it looks like the test didn't pass. Anyway, that's another sin. I should have written the code or the test before the code. Uh, now this one's not coming to me as quickly, and I think I'll tell you one thing that's coming to mind is uh, I'm reusing the profiler here. I say initialize, shut down, check samples, initialize, shut down check samples. I wonder if, now we know that adding this test in uh, add, caused the issue. Let me just control KC, control F5, and we can see the tests are all green. We're good. Now will, here, here's the debugger in me turning on, will this test by itself cause the, cause us to get an error? So I'm going to control KC this out. I don't suspect the tests will fail, but yeah, they failed. So that's nice. I just pinpointed that there's something wrong with this code. Oh, duh. Wow. I'm a loser. Copy paste. Sucks. That should have been a one. And by hitting my desk, I just made something blank out on my external monitor. Whatever. Control of five. 
Ah, good, the test passed. Let's bring this one back in. Control KU, Control F5. The test still passed. I'm feeling good. I better check in. Hold on. Okay. Uh, well, let me just state it again. I hope you're kind of picking up on my debugging techniques. But the fact that I initially thought, well, I added this, I got an error, so there must be something wrong with the initialize shutdown, initialize shutdown. And I even kind of mentioned that as I was talking along. But then I had a hunch that said, well, let's just verify that my hunch, or that hunch is right. I wanted to verify that. So my debugger, debugging skills turned in on, turned on inside my mind and said, you know what, let's, let's comment this out and isolate the issue down to here and see if this causes a problem by itself. And sure enough, it did. So then that ruined my theory of the initialized shutdown, initialized shutdown. Um, and that just saved me a whole bunch of time. Had I just jumped into my theory and said, let's go see what initialize is doing and see if something's getting screwed up when we do the shutdown and the initialize. And I just wasted all that time because that wasn't the problem. The stupid problem was I didn't change this to a one. Anyway, so debugging skills. I they're hard to teach, but the more you can get them, the better. And I hope by seeing the way I think and debug, it's helping you uh, get those debugging skills.